Come on. Come on, Nick. Drive. Yeah. You. Come on, Nick. Get there. Go. Yeah. All right, guys. So welcome back to the No Switch Fitness YouTube page. We've got a banger for you guys today. We've got both Nicks in town. This one's always the training partner. This one's in town from Florida. And as always, Tony, uh, Class of Physique competitor, is gonna be joining us. Our favorite day of the week is Sunday leg day. Uh, I'm gonna start off with some leg curls and get after it for you guys. So a lot of clanging, a lot of banging. Make sure you guys stay tuned and ask questions. What did you say? <laughs> Meg's back here. Meg, Meg was gonna hack for y'all, but it's broken, so she's gonna pendulum squat for y'all. Um, not the same, she was all in hype mode, but you'll get a little bit of Meg too so the girls can watch some actual training and what a female should be doing too. So make sure you guys stay tuned, put your questions in the comments below, let's get after it. Hold the hip position. Better, come on. Drive. Show you. Go. Ah! Come on! Take it. Ah! Negative. So you guys have heard us positionally talking about setting up the rib cage to keep the pelvis in the right position. Uh, we haven't talked a lot about breast cycle here. So one of the biggest things to help maintain that is pulling air in on the negative and blowing out as you come up on the concentric to help with the breast cycle of each rep so that you're able to create pressure where you need it most to hold the hips in the right position. So make sure that is the last little piece of the setup, you're doing the breast cycle right. If you want the full detailed uh, pelvis position explanation, we did in our last leg day video, so go check that out. And then the breast cycle is just the last piece of it. Good. Go up. Right. So it's like. But you still take it too far, is what he's saying. Yeah. yeah. So no, even if I you know. drive that cue, have to like and the rep goes to your butt, your pelvis is gonna move. Yeah. Like yeah. that's that's the main thing is like setting up in that position where you don't fly it to your ass cheek. So it has to be somewhere in the middle, like what I started with and what I corrected it to. Yeah. It has to be somewhere like the main yeah. guiding principle for you is you're gonna think way too directionally. Uh, when you set up with your torso, you want to find a neutral position for everything from the top of your ribs to the bottom of your ass, mm -hmm. okay? So like you're setting up so that everything from here to here is in a position you feel is good, so you're strong to hold yourself in, and then from here down is accommodated for how much pressure you want to put in with your knee. Yeah. Which ends up like you have that whole middle ground where your hamstring attaches up here, you need to be worried about what the fuck this is doing. Mm -hmm. If you're not paying attention to what this is doing up here by your hip, then you're gonna use everything around that area to help move you around. And so that's what happens when you get to that like three quarter way up and it has to like do that extra kick. Yeah. It's your pelvis turning interiorly and your lumbar spine pulling up a little bit. And that's right. I keep telling you like the pelvis movement is way too much. that rhythm. Keep that rhythm. Keep breathing. Oh, you're a fucking freak. Go up. Great set by her. She undershot that big time. It's only her second time doing the movement, so 
Clearly there's a lot of runway there for. I did a lot of rest. Maybe lightheaded, like it was a good lightheaded, you know, like fuck yeah, I see stars. That like leg day high. Way. It's like the runner's high, but leg day high. Yeah, I'm like, okay. It's like whites and stars and not really sure what you're seeing. I just had to... My knees smell like I I fucking it. nose salt. What is nose torque? They don't need nose torque. Nose torque. Uh, I get to the needs. I get to the bottom of the squat. I get a whiff of my thing, and I'm like supercharged, and like get out of the hole. Ready to go. You know the sniffing salts you use before like a max effort? It's my knee sleeve. All right, so we're gonna be doing pendulum squat as the second movement out of the gate. Um, one of the big things on this is like gaining pelvis control. So you'll see us drive foot pressure hard down into the big toe upon setup to drive that hip into the bottom of the pad. Depending on how big you are, you'll actually see your shoulders move forward a little bit. But the big purpose of having this pad is to drive that hip here to gain that rib cage to pelvis line and limit pelvis movement. Now, with this, foot position is very important because we can still get pelvis movement if the feet are too high. So just watch the squat. If you see those knees start to come back towards you, um, then that's a problem because that's that hip tucking under at the bottom. So we kind of cue that via driving that hip into that bottom portion of that pad so that we maintain that position into the bottom. And then Nick, the squatting king over here, is going to pro squat. Squat. Or safety, depending on how this next one feels. So this piece specifically, most people, including pretty much everybody else in the group that tried this to warm up on, didn't like it. I like it. The reason why it differs, somebody like Luke, somebody like Dunsworth, they're more of an A-frame squatter, so for them to get into a depth that really works for them, their hips take a turn first, and their knees have to track out more like this for them to squat. Somebody like me and Tony, and Meg actually, we can set our feet more directly underneath our hips, and then our travel is more knee straight forward in there. Because of that, set up in this you have to set up your feet a little bit behind you for you to stay upright or else it will force you into shooting your hips back to stand it up so it's a little bit convoluted as a setup for you to try if you don't really know what you're doing and looking for but if you are a really upright squatter this may be something that you can use as something to bridge in between the difference of a regression and progression pattern over a squat I have this in my program specifically because I can't hack squat for any length of time over multiple rotations it ends up screwing me up. I end up getting knee issues, IT band issues, ankle issues, pretty much everything you can imagine because I found that I can get into an extreme range of motion through all of these joints on a hack, but I learn through an offloading mechanism without having to get there with active control like a free squat where you're really pressed into a position you need to organize everything yourself, end up becoming insufficient in my control, and I start offloading that into places that it doesn't be, that it's not actually productive. And so I have this in a safety squat pattern as my squats right now, so that I can regain some of my efficiency in squatting that I lost after a period of time that I couldn't do a lot of axial loading without having a lot of collateral damage to my overall performance capacity over the week. So this works as a half step between a hack and then a safety bar squat, which is a regress pattern for me to a front squat and a high bar back squat, which is my main output movement as a squat pattern, which I would prefer mostly, but is not an option currently. Your bar. Okay. Two, or three, sorry, go. Four, come on, come on, you got more. Oh. Again, I need three, three beats, go, 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 go Tony. Easy two, right here. Come on. Yeah. Yes, Tony, come on, it's a long book. Take this. Ah. One, 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 come on. Go, drive. Ah. <laughs> Real quick, I'm changing off the pro squat 
first warm-ups that didn't feel right. I think there's a difference between the model that I have available at Revive Gym versus the one that's here. I think the lever is a little bit longer or shorter on one or the other. So it feels a little bit different when I'm in it. And so it kind of pushes me out of position. And I'm, honestly, if I think about it, me having been traveling, doing a lot of sitting and standing at shows and whatnot, probably not super conducive to me having everything working quite well. So go with something that's a little bit easier to do. Turn on. Three, two, yep. Oh. Your bar. Whoa. 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 <laughs> yeah, I'm still not grooving on my brace well. You look like you're off. It's my main major issue. I'm trying to figure out. You're getting to the top and you look like you're losing it. I am. Yeah. So I'm trying to find that balance point between cueing into my posterior tilted position to start here. Then as I come closer to the bottom, if I remain there, I lose my brace as I come forward. But I also can't sit back here because I can't squat like that. My leverage is sitting here, so I need to have that perfect balance point somewhere in the middle. And right now, my rotation of my hip is a little bit lacking. And so as I'm trying to sit into equal pronation on both feet, I end up having this one, my right, turns a little bit out. My left dumps in internal a little faster than the other. And then I have hip shift this way. And then as I come up, I lock here. And I can't stand myself up. So I reset by pushing up a little bit, blocking in, and then squatting again. Yeah. And I lose it. Fuck. 
Made it up, bitches. Made it up. Five degree leg press with no band after this um, to load a little bit more of a lengthened position, but it's taken and we don't have access to it, so we're gonna go to the pendulum because the other 45 degree leg presses here <laughs> aren't very good, they're not built very well to keep the pelvis from rolling out of the bottom. So it's not ideal, but productive. Um, we're gonna be doing like the pendulum leg press. I know it's a very similar strength courage resistance profile to the pendulum squat. Like I said, it's not ideal, but it still allows us to be productive because we do touch it pretty frequently. So not much of a learning curve there because we do touch it frequently. Um, but ideally this would be 45 degree leg press with no band um, because that's what we've been doing with the pendulum squat first. So a little bit of a product of not having access to it today, but gonna get after it. that moves. That was light. Not expecting that. How many was that? 23. Come 
Come on. Come on, man. On it, on it, on it. Come on. Go. Come <laughs> on. Adductor work. Just building overall volume for adductors here. Yeah, Typically, just from the logic of the thought process, we've stimulated adductors pretty well on the 45 degree leg press we would usually do. Hitting depth really well with a little bit of outside shoulder width stance. So we should have a quite a bit of adductor pump coming into this. So we'll do two sets of 15 to 20 here. Finish it off with quad extensions and call it a day. We do calves on push, typically. So we don't do calves this session just because quads, hamstrings, that just takes a lot out of us. So we'll, that was the first one. I'll do one more, trying to hit 15 to 20. Go into quad extensions and go for there. Oh! This is Brew. He did not train legs today, but he's consoling us for leg day. Until leg day. Such a good yeah. Like two weeks of training, he calmed the shit down. He's like six levels lower on the hype. Good. 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 No, it is so you. Um, it got delayed. It's fine. I, I don't know if it's Christmas. It'll be Amazon. your birthday slash Christmas present now. <laughs> well, I was gonna wrap it in the elf wrapping paper, even though I, yes. I know that's like oh, a golden rule for, for, for December birthdays, but it's I so love perfect. elf. It's so perfect. I love Elf. Best movie in the world. Best Christmas movie ever. So prime quad extension. Um, a lot of people like to load the shortened tech here, which I get, because um, you're loading the shortened end range, but when it's the last move in the session, to me, it makes more sense to be able to get the quad short by loading it more in the length end where you're a little bit stronger, because we're coming in with so much fatigue, and then tapering the load as you go down the peg. So most load on the top peg, a little bit less on the middle, and then none on the bottom so that you can actually get that quad all the way short when it's so late in the session. So um, that kind of explains why we're loading it this way. I know a lot of you guys will see people out of the gate. Um, people load it pretty heavily in the short. And, um, I just think it makes more sense to do this when it's this late in the session. Um, and try it out for yourselves. You'll, you'll feel what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna get after it. Two sets, 15 and 20, call it a day.
this piece wondering how we are right now I've never done it but like usual Luke's right I'm weakest here and it's really brought up my quads especially so do the shit that you don't want to do and you'll become better all right guys thanks for watching uh, killer leg day even though we had to take a little bit of an audible on that leg press um, logbook was moving for most of the sets except for the top set on pendulum probably doesn't help that I spent all day at a show yesterday. Got about 22,000 steps, so coming in with a little bit more fatigue than usual, but make sure you guys like the video, comment below with any questions you have about any of our sessions. We'll be down there answering questions you guys may have for your own sessions. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications so you know when we're getting those new videos out to you guys. And until next time, no off switch in the pursuit of results.